Hey everybody, it's Julie. Welcome back to Rowan Co. Farms. I'm here for my um, Azure Standard pickup. I drove about an hour from my house uh, to our our pickup site. I don't come every month. There is a monthly uh, site here, a monthly drop-off site, but I only order about every quarter. So uh, it's a little bit easier than having to try to make this drive uh, every single month uh, for things that we need. So I try to plan out at least three months ahead. Um, so that way when it's time to order again, I'm good to go. Uh, we have quite a few people in our group. I think there's at least uh, 40 or 50 cars here today. Um, so quite a large group and it seems to be getting bigger every time uh, that I come. So uh, I'm going to get out. The truck should be here any minute. I'm going to do my part to help unload the truck and get everything separated. So I'll video again once we get finished. Hey friends, it's Julie. Welcome back to Row & Co Farms. Today, let's talk about our Azure Standard bulk food haul. This is all the items that we got uh, this month. Uh, I usually don't go every single month, but I do about every quarter uh, do an order with Azure Standard. And these are the items that I got this time, and we're gonna go over all those today. So let's take a look. So one of the first things that I ordered was some gluten-free bread mix. Um, it's easier for me to just get this already put together. You can put together your own kind of gluten-free mixes, um, but I find it so far to be easier to find stuff that's already blended together. Um, I'm new to the gluten-free game, and so I'm, I'm not there yet with making my own stuff. So this is as far as I've gotten, and I do like this mix here. Um, this is Pamela's, so I'm, I'm gonna keep ordering that. I ordered it last time too, so. Uh, next up are some hazelnuts. This is two pounds. Um, we like hazelnuts. I prefer those over, you know, like peanuts and stuff like that. So uh, two pounds of those. Um, next up, some dried mango. Uh, this is organic. Um, I got five pounds last time and we ate it all. Um, I, I just went with one pound this time and because uh, it's pretty expensive. Uh, but next time I'll probably do a little bit more. Um, I've got a few different spices here. Uh, this is a pound of paprika. This is one of my favorite spices to use. I pretty much use this in almost every single uh, meat-based dish that I make. Um, I just, I love paprika. That's my German roots. My mom was always like, lots of paprika, lots of paprika. So um, that's one of my favorites there. Uh, next, I got some uh, four color peppercorns. Uh, I like fresh ground pepper when I'm cooking and so Got a bag of those, that's a pound of those there. Um, then just Dandy Blend, which is a dandelion like tea, um, which is really, um, really good for you. So I'm gonna be using some of that. I got uh, some organic tomato paste. You know, I know this is something that I could make with my tomatoes that I grow at home, but I just, this, is, this isn't a hurdle that I wanna cross. So I'm gonna use my tomatoes for sauce and uh, you know, diced tomatoes when we can those up, but uh, just for organic uh, paste, I bought a case of that. There's 12 of them here, and that should last me probably a year, so I won't need those again for a while. Uh, next, I got some coffee. Uh, normally, I buy just a big five-pound bag of coffee beans, but they were out, and all they had was one-pound bags of already ground coffee, so I did go with that. It's That's not my first choice. I'll probably go ahead and put in an order for another you know, bag of you know, beans for the next month because I do prefer that. But we will go ahead and use this up um, pretty quickly. Um, next, these two items are starter cultures for kefir, water kefir and milk kefir. Um, I got a new source recently for raw milk and so I wanna start doing some raw milk kefir um, so this is pretty exciting. I will definitely be doing a video following up on that. Um, same with the milk kefir. Milk kefir, I'm sorry, water kefir is um, similar to like a kombucha, but it's water-based instead of tea-based. So these are the starter cultures for those um, from Cultures for Health, but got them through Azure Standard. You can use either of those companies um, to get those. That's a good option. Um, next, I got some fractionated coconut oil. Uh, normally coconut oil, you know, is solid at room temperature and 
this will stay liquid at room temperature no matter what. Um, so I use this in some of my um, essential oil preparations when you need a carrier oil. I like to use a coconut oil for that. So I just have a small jar and that will last me for quite a while. Um, next up, I have balsamic vinegar. This is organic. Um, I got two jars of that. I, I just like balsamic vinegar. We use it a lot. Um, we reduce it down with a little bit of sugar and make a glaze on vegetables and stuff like that. And it's really good. Um, next, I got two gallons of apple cider vinegar with the mother, um, which is, you know, the fermented good stuff. So we, we like our apple cider vinegar. I use that all the time. Uh, next, I got eight of these gallon size jars. As you guys know, you've been on my pantry tour with me. I use these for all the dry goods and storage, and I just, I keep needing more. So uh, when I get done with showing you guys all this today, I'll take you into the pantry with me as we put everything away, and I'll show you where I'm putting all my stuff. So uh, along with this too, I got, uh, a pack of lids that goes with these uh, so that didn't actually come with there you buy the jars and the lids come separate so I had to pay for those um, separately all right next up let's take you on down a little ways we have uh, pastas so I um, again I'm gluten-free so I really have tried to make some pasta myself but it's, it's hard to make your own gluten-free pasta at home. So um, I have purchased some of these brown rice pastas. Those are Jovial brand, and then also some corn pastas, um, some different varieties. So that helps me out a lot when I can get some organic uh, varieties of gluten-free options. Um, and so far, my family cannot tell the difference between this type of boxed pasta and your regular wheat pasta. Once you add sauce to it, no one knows, notices the difference at all. Um, so next up, I got uh, vegetable bouillon cubes. Um, I really like using these when I'm cooking soups or just regular vegetables as a seasoning. They're just little um, blocks of bouillon. So I enjoy those. Uh, next, I got four four bags of the almond flour. Again, you know, gluten-free. This is good for gluten-free baking. Uh, some of the cookies that I like to make for myself are made with gluten, uh, with almond flour. So, and then lastly here, I have a 25 pound bag of raw cane sugar. This is the kind of sugar that I like to use in my coffee. And I find it's just easier to get a big bag and store it in my big uh, five gallon buckets. Uh, oh, last thing on my list is I just get some of my minerals and supplements, and this is just uh, some zinc. I ordered magnesium too, but it actually was out of stock, so I did not get that. And um, I also ordered olive oil, a gallon of olive oil, and it was also out of stock, so I was not able to get that this time. Uh, so this is, this is my stuff. So let's go into the pantry, and we'll put some of it away, and I'll show you how I store it. So things like sugar, flour, rice, oats, they get stored in our five gallon buckets with a gamma seal lid, which is basically a screw on lid. So that way you can get in and out of the bucket really easily and quickly um, without having to pry off this um, other type of lid. So invest in this kind of lid. It really does make a difference, especially if it's something that you have to access fairly regularly, which we do. Um, now, I do keep a glass jar nearby with my kind of working um, daily sugar that I need. Um, and then when that gets empty, I fill it up from this bucket. So I monitor when this bucket gets low and you can see that's how much I had left, which was why I had to order some more. So we're gonna put this into here.
All of my dried fruits uh, usually go into some type of glass uh, jar. I'm gonna see if they will fit into this jar this time. So I like to store all of my flowers in these gallon size jars, like the ones that I got from Azure this time. So last time I ordered, they did not have the lids. Like I said earlier, you have to order the lids separately. So I have been having plastic on these lids, on these jars. So I have new lids now, so I'm going to be replacing those. Um, and then I'm gonna be adding um, some more gluten-free flour to this uh, this is an all-purpose gluten-free flour into this one, and then my bread mix that I got is going to go into this one here. So, they sent me my lids, and they sent me 11 gold lids and one white lid. These people. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a conformist. I want everything to look the same, and it's, it's not going to look the same. I'm going to have to put this jar in a different location. Anyway, let's put our lids on. Hazelnuts also get stored in glass jars, mason jars, uh, just with a regular mason uh, screw top lid. Hopefully there's enough room in here to put them all. I think there are. myself and those are ready to go into the pantry now so I've got several assorted glass jars again I love glass jars uh, I'm gonna be putting my pasta in these I finally just parted with all of the gluten pasta that I still had kind of laying around that I've been thinking that I was going to use for my family but I just really don't use it so I've given that to someone who can use it and I'm going to replace it with all of my gluten-free pastas. So let's do that. So while I'm at it today, I'm gonna to go ahead and top off all of my containers that are in my pantry um, with my items that are in my five gallon bucket. So, our bulk items, uh, this is oats, stay into these buckets, and then I keep just working uh, containers where I can just easily grab and get this out so I'm not working out of a bucket um, in the middle of my kitchen when I'm working on a recipe. So I'm just gonna get everything topped off that I haven't topped off recently. So the oats and the sugar, the rice, we already did all the pastas together. So we're gonna just get everything ready for a nice round of baking and cooking again. So, there we go. So our sugar also stays in a five gallon bucket. And then we keep a working container.
flowers up here. This shelf contains everything that I need for baking. So all my flours, oats, uh, cornmeal, sugar, almond flour, brown sugar, honey, uh, salt, chocolate chips, all the baking extracts, yeast, um, anything you can think of for baking is in this section right here. So this section of the pantry houses all of our vinegars. Uh, we have apple cider, balsamic. Um, behind there is just white distilled vinegar. Uh, in this container here, we have just some of the other uh, fancier vinegars like white wine, red wine, rice wine, um, and some of those champagne vinegar, those kind of things. Stuff that we don't use quite as often, those are in there. Um, up here are our assorted uh, seeds. Uh, pepitas, sunflower seeds, popcorn, things like that. Um, on this next section here is all of our nuts. So like our hazelnuts are here that we packaged up earlier. Um, we also have almonds, walnuts, uh, cashews, and then here are some of our dried um, items that we've done. Have three more uh, containers of sun-dried tomatoes that need to come in here. Here are our cranberries and raisins, uh, our dried mangoes, other fruits that we're, we're using up here. So lots of good stuff there. And then moving down here, you'll see all of the pastas that we packaged up here. This is some cereal, our rice and beans. Our over, oh, excuse me, our rice and beans are right here. And then just below that are our fats. So we have some duck fat. Behind that is chicken fat. Uh, more duck fat here. Some coconut oil. And then in here, assorted um, plant-based oils. So sunflower oil and olive oil, avocado oil, some ghee some sesame oil, some different things like that. Uh, then we have our snacks. Those are the same. We always have a few snacks. And then some of our basic uh, condiments and peanut butter and things like that. So. So down here at the bottom of the pantry is where we keep all of our five gallon buckets. Uh, we keep various different types of things in these buckets, uh, starting with dog food and cat food um, that I use every single day uh, when I feed the animals. We keep our different flours in here, uh, different types of sugar, rice, rolled oats, um, cornmeal, um, einkorn flour, uh, lots of different types of things down here in these buckets. Um, these all have a gamma seal lid. We talked about those earlier. They screw on and off. That makes it easier for us to get in and out of the buckets. And then we just store them underneath here. And there's a, just a little fabric that hangs down just to cover it up and make it look neat. So that's how we store all of our big items in our pantry. So I've done a little rearranging since the last time we did a pantry tour. And I've just kind of redone um, the order of our canned items in here. I've started and I actually put it in rainbow order even though there's not that much variation in color with a lot of canned items. They lose some of that vibrancy but I did change the order of things. I think it looks really nice. Um, we have added some new canning items uh, because canning season is in full swing right now so we've been adding more salsas, tomatoes, cowboy candy, different jams and jellies, uh, honey, marinades, 
uh, chicken stocks, all kinds of stuff has been getting added into the pantry. So um, that's reflected here in what you see today. And we're just gonna be adding more as the season goes along um, because we're just in full harvest season right now. So I really do hope that we get a whole bunch more things to add into here. Um, we'll work our way through some of the store-bought canned things and replace those with our home canned items. So I'm excited to add to the collection. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. I enjoyed showing you my pantry, our Azure Standard Hall, and how we store some of our bulk goods here. If you have any questions, leave them for me down below. I look forward to seeing you next time here at Rowan Co. Farms.